Don't pick, see the dermatologist, and in 10 years you'll look back and you'll laugh and you'll say, look at me now, no one would ever know you even had acne. Right. Today on my channel, I have the better and cooler sibling of Dr. Ross, Dr. Hannah. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for being on my channel. Thank you for having me. Of I course. feel like we're good friends already. We already are, we already are. First thing I wanna say is subscribe to my channel below if you like these type of videos. You can check out Dr. Ross's in my video last week, but today we have Dr. Hannah. What are you in life? What do you do in life? So I completed my internship in June and now I am finally a licensed physician. I'm currently a dermatology fellow at Boston Medical Center and I am in the skin oncology um, center. Yes, so today why I wanted Dr. Hannah on my channel is because I wanted her to talk about skincare in your teenage and college years. What you should be doing, what happens if you have, if you have acne, what do you do about the acne, just really the basics of how you should be taking care of your skin from a dermatologist standpoint. Acne. Acne could be very troublesome, but a lot of people deal with the self-esteem issues of acne. You know, growing up, you see your friends that ha are sometimes covered in acne and they're called like pizza crust and they're crusting. You know, it could be due to hormones, sometimes stress, sometimes it's just a genetic factor that some people are more predisposed to acne than others. I was fortunate enough to have the good skin in my family. Um, actually, also my brother had good skin. I didn't deal with acne, but I have friends who dealt with acne and I know that they went through a lot of hard times to try to put it at bay and treat it. So I'm happy to talk to you about acne today. Number one, do not pick. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. You're gonna get scars and you will never be able to treat those scars and have perfect skin if you start picking your acne. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, how about like whiteheads? Cause I like pick my whiteheads. Don't do that either. Try not to, um, definitely let them come to the surface as much as possible. And then when maybe th when they're right about to come out at that point, you can try to squeeze them out, but I would still recommend you see a dermatologist. Okay. The first thing I do when I walk into CVS, the way we read or Walgreens is I say, oh my God, what product is good for me? I have sensitive skin. I don't know about I you. do also. So I prefer something as gentle as Cetaphil is very light, it doesn't leave a residue. I wash my face with it in the morning and at night. It's not drying. And then right before bed or right after I get out of the shower, I put a little moisturizer on my face that's non-comedogenic. That's non-comedogenic, which means it's not going to clog your pores. And that's it. I. I really don't overdo it with my skin. I, I have some pimples, at times I do. I use something called Different Gel, which used to be a prescription actually, and now it's over the counter. Um, it, it works so well, it works just as well as any prescription. I really recommend it. And I don't work for them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it actually doesn't have to be something like fancy. Like Cetaphil is not like a fancy, expensive brand. No, it's not, and it works Every dermatologist highly recommends Cetaphil. CeraVe is another great option. Uh, CeraVe makes sunscreen, but they also make moisturizer and face wash. I like both, you can switch off. Both are highly recommended by dermatologists. So just because it's more expensive, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily better? Definitely not. Okay. I actually find some of the more expensive products that you can buy at a, a high-end department store to be more drying or to have more chemicals. Some people prefer that to go to the organic route. Mm -hmm. Like with the organic vegetables, they think their skin products should also be organic. You have to find the thing that works best for you. What I would like to hear from you guys is what you use. So comment below and let us know because I'm really curious actually what everyone else is using out there. The sunscreen. Sunscreen? I use sunscreen every single day. Oh wow, that, you are unique. We, <laughs> that is a dermatologist's dream come true. Really? <laughs> so you should be using sunscreen every day. You should day. use sunscreen every day, even in the winter, because when you walk outside to your car, you're getting a little sun, and even that sun can cause skin damage. So sunscreen at all times is the best way to go. What's your take on tanning? Um, I am, I love the beach, so I can't tell you that I don't like the sun. But at the same time, I'm one of those people that goes to the beach. I'm 
full, I'm fully equipped in my hat. I got my sunscreen <laughs> layered on like a ghost. My friends laugh at me, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm protected. I don't get a sunburn. And in 10, 20 years from now, I won't have skin cancer. So I'm happy. And you're going to look fabulous in 10, 20 years yeah. from now. I won't you... have those wrinkles. Right. That's what sun does. It causes wrinkles and also like sunspots. Who wants to look like a prune? Pass. Not me. Hard pass. Yeah. Acne is so common and we're all very self-conscious when we have a pimple on our face. But I don't know, for me, everyone has pimples on their faces. So like, why am I so self-conscious about it? Like what I wanna get a little deeper into is just like the self-confidence and maybe just like owning my pimples. What's your take on that? So I totally get it. I, when I have one pimple on my forehead, I feel like I have a crater on my forehead. And I feel like people are looking at me and that's all they see. They don't even see my eyes, they don't see my face, they just see that one huge pimple on my forehead. But you have to realize no one's actually paying such close attention. They're looking at you as a person, they're looking at you as your personality. They're not looking and analyzing every blemish on your face. So that's the first thing. You have to remember, don't get so caught up in what is on the outside. That's such a good point. You're yeah. right. It's like, it's the whole person. Exactly. You know, it's just not that one little pimple or the acne that you have. It's your sense of humor, your intelligence, and how kind you are. I think that's the most important qualities and not what's on your face. And I think one more point is the acne isn't there forever. It's definitely peaks in your hormonal ages, like when you're 12, 13, 14, even up to 16. But I promise you, you're gonna look back in like 10 years when you're in your 20s or 30s and you're gonna laugh and say, why was I so self-conscious? Because you won't have acne, you'll have beautiful skin as long as you take care of it, as long as you don't pick it, and as long as you see a dermatologist and treat it right. Don't pick, see the dermatologist, and in 10 years you'll look back and you'll laugh and you'll say, look at me now, no one would ever know you even had acne. Right, so true, really good point. Dr. Hannah, thank you so much thank for you. being this on my channel. Great. Feel Feel free to reach out to me if you have any skin questions or any other medical questions. I'm happy to help and always here. Where can they find you? Dr. Han. Yes, I'll put it right under here. If you like this episode, please subscribe, comment below if you want to hear anything else from Dr. Hannah. Thank you so much for being on my channel. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.